Hello and welcome. I'm Daniel Kim with Game Changer, and this is going to be a one episode series on how to create your own platformer game. So let's define what is a platformer game. Now, to use an example, Super Mario Bros. is probably one of the most famous platformer games. Let's go to blank workspaces. And for today, we want to go with the platformer project. So let's go ahead and go to the platform project and start the project. The first thing that you'll be seeing is this stage here. Uh, and this is the default stage. But we want to be able to change some aspects of it. First, let's go on to code. And as you can see, uh, Cody over here has all this code here. But we want to be able to learn how to be able to create this on our own. So let's first remove Cody. And for the sake of Christmas, we want to add an actor that'll look like Santa Claus. And I looked through the media library. There was nothing that really resembled Santa Claus enough for my liking. So what I actually was able to do was go to upload actor and choose from uh, these sprites that I downloaded. And what sprites are is, are basically images like this. And where you could find the sprite that I specifically chose is on uh, this site called GameArt2D, and I just simply got the Santa Claus uh, free sprite, and it's for a free download. I was able to download all these um, different images. Uh, for today, the only image that I'm going to want to use from my files, uh, first you're going to want to go to Santa Sprites after you download it, and then go to PNG, and then all these different ones will come pop up. Uh, the reason why there's so many different images is um, for animation purposes. Uh, so for example, uh, running, it's simply not one image converted to another, but rather a series of images being converted to another. Uh, that's why there are so many. However, in this case, to save some time, uh, we'll go into animation later, but for now, let's just hit idle one. And let's open this, and it will automatically add uh, this image of Santa Claus. Now, what I like to always first do is to establish the stage. And what I mean by that is basically add some music and set it to set active to false on the stage so that the character doesn't actually um, bump into the background and such. And to find the set active false, we go to the physics section over here and set active to false here and attach that there. So now the stage is set active false. We also want to include some music, and you can find the exact sound block in sounds, and attach this play sound here, and you could add sound. However, I do want it to play throughout the entirety of the game, and what we can do to keep continuously play the sound is go to control, find the forever loop, and there's going to be this little C shape in which you can attach this play sound into. And now we have a forever loop with the play sound. And now, you can go ahead and add any sound you want from this um, fairly vast library. I think that I'm going to want to actually include my own music. And you can do this yourself, where you can upload an asset. I already have a preset downloaded one. Uh, Jojo Bizarre Adventure Awaken. I like to play this to boost my testosterone levels. And these tend to take a while when you import them uh, to actually come in. So I'll go ahead and start working on some other stuff. Let's move on to the Santa itself. Now, I want to set some properties right away. I want I want these to be on start. I want these to be true. So let's go down to platform where there's going to be all these resources that I mentioned previously. And the first one is I want him to become the good guy. And I also want, more importantly, the camera to be set to me. Let's find the set the camera to me. And if you're having trouble finding it, um, a faster way is actually, you can search it up in this section here. Let's say, um, set up and run character. Let's say I'm not able to find that as fast, I can just type it up. Set up and run character. It allows the character to run. And what I um, included the set camera to me for is, the camera's gonna follow um, your character. So then if you move, um, to the right, let's say, the camera won't stay in one position and have your character move out of frame, but rather the frame will follow your character. And that's a very important aspect of platformers, is for the camera to actually follow the character. 
next thing we want to do is move on to movements. If you have trouble on this part, you could either um, replay this section or go ahead and go to my previous video um, called Tag. And we go over um, movement quite extensively in that. So for this, I think I'm going to go with three different um, event handlers, all for um, when a certain key is pressed. Uh, for this one, I want it to be W to match a jumping one. A, A, or A. For left, then D for right. Now that we have these, I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the A and D. And for this, I'm going to have a repeat while from the controls. Attach the repeat whiles to both the D and A. And let's find all the movement that we need. So go down to motion. We want to find point towards. Exactly. Point towards. These. So what these blocks allow you to do is for when a certain key is pressed, um, the character will actually point in a certain direction. And then once we add the um, move 10 pixels into each of these, oh, that's what we'll do. Move 10 pixels. We can adjust the 10 pixels later on. We want it's a point when you press the A, A is on the left side, so we want to point to the left edge. So it's going to be pointing to the left edge and then move left. So it's going to be moving um, 10 pixels to the left edge. And now we'll do um, the mirror for uh, the D. The D is on the right, so we do right edge and then it's going to move to 10 pixels to the right edge. And we want this entire um, string here to repeat while a key is pressed, right? Um, this will help the movement go slower, I mean um, smoother, which is why we have the repeat while. It'll be a lot more um, jagged if it didn't have the repeat while, which you'll be able to see if um, you go ahead and go to the tag tutorial. Um, but essentially, what we want to replace this false here with is a sensing um, block. So we go down to sensing and include when touching or Actually, when key pressed. When key pressed. And let's move these and replace the pulses. And as you can see, it says up arrow, but we want these to be able to match one another. So let's do A for um, when A pressed. Repeat while key A pressed. And then do the same for this D. And now we have the basic movement um, established. And what I like to do is whenever I establish a major um, change in my code is to test it out. So we know that the music loaded properly. And I think that is a bit loud for me. Um, you could always lower the volume on your computer, the music, but what I think I'm gonna do is actually, what you can do is set the volume to a different percentage, Let's say 50%. And now the volume will be substantially um, lower. So I'm going to keep that around at 50%, and I think that I'm happy with that. And now, we can, uh, let's test the movement. Okay, and I think that's a little faster. So what I can actually do is adjust this, and move, move three pixels instead. And for now, I think I'll actually uh, uh, remove this block so that uh, it doesn't continuously um, play music uh, throughout my explanations. And now let's uh, try the new uh, new speeds. I think I'm a bit happier with that. And now we also see that Santa Claus is a lot bigger than we would like him to be. So we could actually go back to events and then on start we can change the size. We go down to looks, set size. On start I want his size to not be 100% it is now rather 25%. Now, see, yep. For the jumping part of the code, we're gonna wanna attach the string to when w pressed for the jump function. And to do this, there's some more complex um, additions of like creating your own blocks per se. And that would be a topic for a different video. So what we can actually do is uh, find uh, an example that we could just simply input in here to replace the code for now. So what we can do is search up already. I think. 
And as you can see, among the samples, this pops up. And this allows the character to double jump. But as you can see, there's this block here that you would have to be you would have to create your own and give own value to. And that would be a topic for a different other video. So for now, let's just replace um, when up arrow pressed with when W pressed. And that should give us the ability to start double jumping. But this gives us a unique issue. And you'll be able to see what I mean. You can see I can just move around normally, zooming around. But let's, let's, let's see what happens when we jump. Now I jumped. Now I can move everything else normally. But now I can no longer... I'm pressing the W key right now, you can hear. And it's not activating. And that's because the actor doesn't realize, or the system doesn't realize, that the actor has landed on ground again. It doesn't allow, the system doesn't allow the actor to continuously jump or else that'd just be like flying. So the actor has to um, be touching the ground, but the system doesn't register that. Uh, if we go down to physics, we say, when actor collides, we find collisions. We'll uh, handle collisions, I believe handle collisions, yes. It is in gameplay, handle collisions. So now the actor action, the system registers that the actor is colliding when it li lands with the platform. Now, let's see if it works. Collided, if we, and see, the system realizes that it in fact landed. Now with all the basic um, stuff out the way, we can go ahead and start actually modifying what the stage will look like. And we could actually do this by clicking on stage. Now that we are on the stage editor, we can go ahead and start becoming a bit more creative with uh, our level. And it's a lot easier on a platform to actually choose uh, what exactly you want to add. So if you go up to here, there's a brick with a paintbrush. You can choose different um, layers that you can make. And as you can see, I can just start dragging this along, make a stage. I can choose different materials just to for examples, let's see, waterfall. Um, and for this part, I really want uh, you guys to be creative with it and make your own stage and challenges. Now, briefly, I'll uh, show what my stage looks like now. Now, here's what my uh, stage looks like. So essentially, I made this passageway to the top over here, and this is gonna be like a mock chimney. It's gonna have a reindeer on top, which is gonna move it to the next level essentially, but we'll get to that. I made this passageway too s small for Santa to fit through. So I'm gonna actually include power-ups throughout the map. And I'm gonna include a shrinking power-up over here. That's going to uh, shrink Santa enough to fit through and make it to the reindeer that we'll be adding. So let's go ahead and see how to make the power-ups now. Let's go ahead and add actors, and what I want to use for actors can be found in the media library. And what I want are these balls. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the blue ball for shrinking. And then I want to find the pink ball for uh, enlargement. Now, let's actually position these. Uh, I'll be right back if I position them correctly. Okay, now that I have the powers where I want them, uh, I'll show you the very simple code that you need for the power-ups themselves. So on the balls themselves, we actually just want to uh, set the physics. So on start physics, and we just want to set the active to false. And then we'll do the same for the purple ball. Uh, let's go to events, on start, set physics, um, set active to false. And now uh, the actor won't be getting caught on them and can just simply walk through them to get the power up. And we want the actor to actually have the code for uh, the power ups themselves. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So, when touching. So, we want it, the actor to receive the change uh, when they touch the power up, right? So, we're going to want to find when, when occurs. Let's get two of these for each power up. And we can actually go ahead and rename these. Or, what I want to do is rename it. Uh, go ahead. 
ahead and bring it here. Uh, the blue one will be the trigger. So that. Purple. Grower. Very simple names. So now we have two item names, and since they're both active, now we just have to uh, allow these changes to occur when they touch the when the actor touches them. So we're gonna want to find in uh, sensing. Sensing is where uh, it'll be able to determine if they're touching. So drag in these touching, and we don't want when touching mouse pointer. We want it when touching. Uh, shrink root for one of them, and one touching grower for one of them. And we can set the looks, and this is what uh, what's going to actually happen, right? We want to set the size differently. So let's find set size over here, and we want to set the size on the shrinker um, from the original 25% in the beginning to 10%, and then the set size um, for the grower um, back to 25%. Because we want him to be back to normal after he gets the grower. Now we have the all the items. Now the final component to this is going to be the reindeer, which is going to be the final point essentially. And to do that, you can actually go to the media library, find the uh, go down to winter, and there will be a friendly reindeer you can choose. And it's going to randomly, whenever you add an actor, it'll just randomly position the uh, actor on the stage, but let's find him. There we go. Maybe he did. Maybe perhaps he wasn't added. Let's go back to code, actually. And I'm dragging it, actually. Oh, cut that part. Whoops, I just need to figure this out. Now that I was able to position the reindeer where I want, where I want it to be, let's get started on the actual code of it. So on start, I want to set active or static. False, just property. And then we're gonna want to do another event block where it says when something occurs. So we want this to be the uh, final, kind of like the flagpole if you think about Super Mario. If you touch the reindeer, you win. And that's why I positioned him at the top of this uh, house, at the top of the entire um, course. So I wanted to, once again, go to sensing. When touching uh, occurs, but instead I want it to activate when it's touching, uh, let's find idle, idle one. That's the name we have for him for some reason. Actually, you know, we can change the name later. But uh, when touching idle one occurs, we can uh, it'll actually s s change the stage. Right. And to actually change the stage, we want it to go. Let's find it. Oh, I believe it's down here. Set level two. Set level to a certain level. And as you can see, there's only one level. What we can actually do is go ahead and over here on these three dots, add new level. And there's now two levels. And we want the reindeer to be the final point for level one, so we're gonna have it set to level two. So when uh, little Santa over here um, touches uh, Rudolph, it will activate it and cause it to go to level two. And whenever you're doing these kinds of things, make sure that the levels are actually beatable and playable and fun to play. And yeah, and on your second level, make sure to repeat the processes, but make sure to add some variation from the first level. Maybe increase difficulty or uh, change different items that you could do. So in this case, I did a little Alice in Wonderland kind of thing, where you need to shrink to get through certain parts or grow to get to the top. And that's all I have for you guys today, and that's the basics of how to create a platformer.